rolling. Hey guys, it's Shelby and I'm going to be making another video about the wonderful adventures of having a father with lung cancer. Sarcasm. It's, a, it's pretty great there. Yeah. So um, I'm just going to jump right into it. Uh, today at work while sweeping. Fun fact, that's when I have my deepest thoughts. This is when I'm sweeping at work. Um, I got to thinking about some things I want to talk about in a video. Some things that bother me. So let's get to it. Uh, the other day, me and my mom were at a store, and a cigarette store at that. Imagine that. And um, the lady there, who was giving my mom my dad's cigarettes, happened to know my dad. He was like, is Randy still smoking? Yes, he is. As you see, you're holding a pack that he's going to smoke. Probably all of it in one day, too. Isn't that great? And, um, wow, I'm so sarcastic. I need to stop that. But, um, And she's like, well, you know, we're all going to die at some point. Yes, we are all going to die, and I understand that. And, yeah, that's life. It's fact. But, um, and a lot of people find comfort in that since dad's sick and stuff. That we're all going to die. Well, you know. Lung cancer is a pretty sucky way to go. I mean, have you ever seen anybody with lung cancer? Never there in the hospital, they're hooked up to all these tubes and machines and on a breathing device that they've never had to use ever before in their life. And you lose appetite in food. And you get smaller. And you get sick is easier. At one point when dad was in the hospital, we had to wear gowns, gloves, and a mask because any bacteria that got on them would, could kill them. That's what lung cancer is. That's where smoking can lead you to. And now he's home, thank God, and he's been home for oh, a little over five months now. Yeah, it's June. And, um, and in the past week, he's had problems eating, you know, and let's just small things that come along with it with medicine he has to take there's just all these different side effects and it's different for everybody but it sucks for everybody too it's not just oh I have lung cancer I'm dead now there's no gap of calm there or anything it's just all this stuff that comes along with having it and that's what a lot of people don't see and there are I'm not Death isn't a pleasant thing. I mean, I'm sure there are some odd pleasant ways to go, but whenever dad was coming home from the hospital, I told mom I would rather him die in a car accident on the way home than have to suffer like he's been suffering for the past two weeks. And I still mean that. I would rather it be something else other than lung cancer catching up to him and taking him out. It is. From what I've seen of it, it is a pretty sucky, it's pretty sucky. I mean, I see it 24-7 when I'm at home. And then another thing is actually my dad. Um, whenever I found him smoking, I'll be the first to admit, I was thoroughly, thoroughly PO'd. And I did probably the most immature thing I've ever done, ever. Because that night, me and my sister went and got Chinese food, and I had to make my dad's plates. Of course, I'm fuming mad. I won't talk to him. So what do I do? In his plate, from the Chinese buffet, I put all these vegetables he doesn't like, and this food that the doctor says he can't eat. And my sister's like, Shelby, put something in there that he likes. And I was like, okay. So I put a jalapeno in it. That's what I did. I was very upset, as you can see, and then the night after that, he got mad at me and asked me why I was so mad at him. Really? He did. And uh, I told him exactly why I was mad at Randy, and he threw his cigarettes at me and told me to do with them as I like. 
So I took them inside and he followed me and I stood over the toilet with cigarettes in my hand. And I threw one in and I looked at him and I said, this is for my graduation. Threw another one in. It's for senior night on the football field where you said you wanted to stay next to the drum major. This one's for that night. Threw another one in. That's for my wedding you're going to miss. Threw another one in. This is for our, the children I'm going to have that you're not going to get to see because here we are. Square one. And so deep, I guess. But, yeah. And I still get upset whenever I see him smoking. I've come to terms with it, whatever. There's nothing I can do. I'm not going to be able to stop him. Lung cancer can't stop him. Nothing is. And that sucks, but that's life. And one thing he told me when we were sitting down and having a father-daughter talk, one that I treasure, he said... One cigarette isn't going to kill me. This one cigarette that I'm smoking isn't going to kill me. And yeah, I guess that's partially true, but it wasn't one cigarette that gave him cancer, was it? It was years and years of smoking and working with pain and not wearing a mask whenever he should have been. There's, it could have been from whenever he was a painter. It could be the smoking. It's probably a mixture of the both more than likely but he tries to justify his smoking with well I'm going to die eventually like what that one lady said and this one isn't going to kill me I don't think there's any justification there to be honest and that's upsetting but that's true and then the last thing I want to talk about is something that really bothers me like really does um one movie I relate back to a lot whenever I try to tell people what I'm going through is the movie Fifty Fifty with Joseph Gordon-Levitt. It's totally different cancers, different settings. It's what, New York? This is Texas. Maybe it's not New York. It's Chicago, somewhere. And it's just everything about it is different. But the night whenever there's this big party being thrown and there's people coming up to him, Oh, I have an uncle who fought this off. He used this medicine. And then there's the people who, his boss, who's like, Oh, you can turn that presentation in whenever you finish. No hurry, blah, blah, blah. And he's getting all these people saying, I know what you're going through. I know somebody who's beaten it. I know. I know, I know, I know. And really, they don't know. You know, I lost an aunt with thyroid cancer. I didn't know her at all, really. So that one didn't affect me that much. The most it affected me was seeing my mom sad. And I lost an uncle I was very close to, to cancer. And I was in fourth grade, and I remember going to his house. It was the last time I was going to see him, and I knew it. And I told him goodbye. And that's probably one of the hardest things to ever do is telling somebody that you know isn't going to be there next time you come around. Telling them goodbye. And being like 9 or 10, that's really hard on you. And you don't understand everything. You don't have a big grasp on it. And, you know, so I've been through cancer before, but that's not like this. And I have people telling me, oh, I lost my granddad to cancer recently. I know what you're going through. And people who have lost parents that are like, oh, I lost my dad when I was 30 to cancer and different things. And they try to say they know what you're going through, but they don't. I don't know what they went through. They don't know what I'm going through. I mean, yeah, there are those things that are in common. But whenever people say, I lost my granddad. Okay, that's your granddad. There's a big difference between granddad and dad. I mean, some people are closer with their grandparents than they are their own parents, but. And then the people that tell me, Shelby, you act like you're going through this alone. Or you act like you have to. Well, you know what? We're all seeing your dad go through this. We're all going through this together. We, we know what you're feeling. Well, friend, you're my friend. You are watching your friend's dad go through this whenever you come by the house my 
siblings who come by once every few weeks. They're seeing it once every few weeks. I see it when I wake up, when I go to bed, when I'm eating dinner, when I'm cleaning the house. I'm, I'm seeing the cancer all the time. And it's different for me and my siblings other than just the how often they're here. My older siblings, they're more at peace with it because They've, they've been married. They've had their kids. They've either graduated or dropped out of high school. They've, they've had those, what's that word? Oh, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but they've had those moments with dad. And I'm 16 and I'm about to be a senior in high school. <sighs> we have a senior pep rally every year with the parents of the football team, of the band kids, of the cheerleaders. They come out and the football player moms will pretend to be football players and the cheerleading parents will do a cheer or... The band parents this year, they pretended they were playing instruments or something. It was a mess. But it's always so silly. And, yeah. But, um, and I want my dad there for that. Because my dad's crazy, and I know he'd have so much fun with it. And I want him to be there. And then there's the senior football game. Well, the singer night, which is the last football game. And before the game, all the cheerleaders meet up with their parents out there on the field and it, with the football players, too. And the band, it's at halftime. And whenever I became drum major, my dad told me he was so excited to be that he was going to be out there on the field next to the drum major. He was going to be so proud of me at that moment. In reality, it hits me that that might not be able to happen. And then there's graduation next year, too, and the stereotypical, I want him at my wedding. I want him there at the hospital whenever I have my kids. I want him there for everything. And the fact of the matter is, I'm probably not going to get all those things. And that's what makes it hard. And that's what makes it different from my siblings is because they've had those moments with him and I haven't and that's why I, that's one of the reasons why I get mad at people whenever they just they're okay with it they've accepted it you know and it's just like shut up Ugh. but yeah with the people saying they've gone through it, every situation is different my mom when she lost her sister that was her sister and mom was a grown adult at the time. That doesn't make it easier, but that makes, that just causes for a lot of different things. And whenever I lost my uncle, that's nothing compared to this because one, it's my dad, it's not my uncle. I'm 16, I'm not 10. There's different things going on now than there was then. And that's what people, some people don't understand. They just think, Oh, I saw a movie with this guy with cancer, so that, that's what she's going through. No, that's not what I'm going through. Is every love story like The Notebook? No. That was a terrible analogy, but yeah, still, it's just 